Hello and welcome to uh, my fourth Facebook Live to Thrive. Uh, today we're going to talk about self-care. And you might think during a time like now, when so much is going on that seems chaotic and out of control, and um, maybe you don't have very much time to yourself to begin with because you're you know, you've got children and they're around or people are in your home that normally aren't there all the time or you're super busy. You could be one of the people that's more on the front lines right now in a wide variety of careers uh, or, or um, jobs that that you just don't have a lot of time to yourself and you don't have time to get self-care, at least it seems that way to you right now. So uh, you're you're all, those of you that are listening, listening are kind of across this, uh, this spectrum, all, fill all the different spots of all alone and have tons of time to yourself to never alone and don't have time to yourself and don't have time. So I will do my very best to speak to all of you, and hopefully you'll find something that is helpful for you out of this. Self-care is simply, in, in its simplest definition, is taking care of yourself, like caring for yourself on a spiritual level, on an emotional level, on an intellectual level, and a physical level. So all of who you are, everything that makes up you, needs to be fostered, needs to be built up, strengthened in order to be able to give and to function on this planet in a way that comes from health and stability instead of from a place of being completely depleted or any sort of being depleted. Maybe you don't have to be completely depleted. Okay, anyway, sorry, I'm going to go on a sidetrack and I'm not going to go there. So uh, keeping it right here, right here, right? <laughs> right here. <laughs> I always think of Hitch. I don't know if I've said this before, but I don't know if any of you ever watched that movie, but he talks about this guy's dancing and he's teaching him how, you know, you can't be all out here all over the place. Got to bring it in here. Got to keep it in six inches. This is where you live right here. So sometimes I have to do that with my brain because it likes to go off into other spaces and got to keep it right here. Six inches. This is where we live. <laughs> but of course, every now and then I entertain my um, or indulge my uh, tangents. Sometimes they're fun. Uh, sometimes they're just a waste of time. All right, so back to self-care and the importance of it. So we need self-care in order to show up on this planet in a way that is healthier, okay? Think of a sponge. That's what people use a lot, you know? So I'm gonna use that that illustration. Think of a sponge. If a sponge is uh, all dried out, right, and has no liquid in it whatsoever, and you go to squeeze that sponge, nothing comes out, right? In fact, you can't even actually squeeze a dry sponge. Try it. Maybe they break, but it's 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 not the same, right? I, I have a hard time even moving my sponge when it's dry, and I've got to fill it up so that I can use it, right? So I put it under a faucet of water or dip it in a bowl of water, something like that, the sink with water. And now I've got a usable sponge. I can squeeze it and water comes out, right? And I can scrub with it or, or wash with it and it is much more effective in that state. So think of yourself that way. If you're doing very, very little to none of self-care, you're like that dry sponge way less usable. You can kind of use it, but you know, have you ever tried to clean something up off of a counter with a dry sponge? It's all stiff and yeah, it will soak it up, but it just ooh, doesn't feel the same. But you use a sponge that's all, you know, wet and ready and you squeeze it out some and so it can absorb a little bit more, right? So think of yourself like that and self-care is filling up the sponge so that you have something to give. You can be usable in a much more effective way. Sometimes people think of self-care as selfish. If I do things for me, then I'm just being all about myself and that's selfish. And I wanna propose that actually not doing self-care is selfish. So if you don't do anything for yourself, 
in a way, there's a, a selfishness aspect to that that's sort of a, a, um, a flip-flopped selfishness. It seems so selfless to not do anything for yourself. In reality, you are less effective, like I was saying before. You're less likely to show up in this world in a way that is selfless if you are not taking care of yourself. So it's just critical that you um, that we all do this. I have to do this. Everybody needs to do this. So I'm a big uh, uh, advocate of self care, and I understand that there can be challenges to this. But I really want to encourage you to just sort of consider this idea that wow, maybe I will be actually more giving, more kind, um, more able to show up in my full self. Uh, in a healthier way if I take care of myself. Okay, so that's sort of the what is self-care in a sense or the importance of self-care. And now I wanna talk about what does self-care look like? As I move into that, I also want to add another piece here and that is in a time like right now, we are um, we are overwhelmed. All of us are overwhelmed in some capacity either overwhelmed by just the, the gravity of what is going on, even if it's not directly affecting you, if you hear about it, if you um, look around and see the changes in our society worldwide because of what's going on with COVID-19, that is that can feel very overwhelming. It is overwhelming. <laughs> so it's obviously going to feel overwhelming. Um, so you may not be directly affected by it, um, but you may be directly affected by it. And then it's even more overwhelming. And we are way less likely <clears throat> to be able to deal with our emotion and to deal with the stress of what's going on, again, if we're not caring for ourselves. So I want to acknowledge that the part of the importance of this and why I would even do a video on self-care is because in times of trauma, which is what this is. This is a trauma, a, a, a community global wide trauma that we are all being exposed to with varying degrees of the intensity of the trauma and how much it is directly affecting you. And at a time like this, we desperately need to be taking care of ourselves and to be aware of what's going on within our, our own selves or or it's just going to be worse. So I don't I don't know exactly what it's like for you in your home or where you live, the people that you're around or that you're in contact with. But for me, I'm noticing that I am, a, I, have, I have a lot shorter fuse right now. And I'm noticing that I have moments where, and sometimes it's longer time periods than other, but where I just really feel the anxiety, the worry, the fear creeping in and trying to take over. And I find myself having to exert more energy on, on uh, managing that and dealing with it. And I, I, I mean, I know all the strategies intellectually. I'm sharing them with you. I know them. I employ them, but not all the time. And I, I re it really hit me yesterday, even before I had scheduled this, because I had thought, or after I had scheduled this, because I had thought self-care, that's kind of a weird thing to be talking about. I wonder, I wonder if that really fits at the time when I scheduled it. Um, yesterday, I had this moment of how desperately I need self-care. And then I realized, oh, this is actually, I'm grateful for this moment because then it helps me attach more to the importance of what I'm talking about. So there's that. All right. So back to the, to the hows. Um, I guess first I'll just I kind of encourage you to think of different ways that you can care for yourself. So we're all different. What we connect with is different. You know, what works for me may not work for you in terms of self-care. From from a very basic level, we all need to be clean. <laughs> 
that may surprise you. Um, but we do. We need basic hygiene. Shower regularly. Brush your teeth regularly. Keep your um, your skin clean. Like bathing in a shower has more purpose than just that we smell good or that we look good, right? It is also um, just caring for our bodies. If you were never to wash your body, you've got all kinds of um, bacteria and things on your skin and you can get infections if your skin isn't clean. So, you know, regularly bathing is is good for us. Now, most of us aren't really exposed to a lot of uh, dirty conditions. If you're watching this, chances are pretty good. You're you're not exposed to a lot of dirty conditions, but um, it's still important to, 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 to bathe, to keep ourselves clean. So that's a very, I always think of self-care in levels, and that's a very basic level. Hygiene. Uh, rest making sure that you uh, go to bed at night or if you work at night that you get rest during the day, but that you have some time each day that you know, you're in a dark room, a dark space, and it's quiet, or if it's not quiet, you put in earplugs, do something, or you have a, a white noise, background noise that seems to help you sleep. But but this concept of letting your brain rest, some people, very rare people, don't sleep at all. And even they are advised by doctors to <clears throat> act as if you are sleeping. So close your eyes, let your body relax, and just be in this space of quiet and stillness so that you can recharge. So we all need that. That's a basic. Uh, how many hours of sleep it varies based on you. So you know you best, figure out what that is. I can't tell you what that is. <laughs> so we've got hygiene, we've got rest, food, eating. We need to eat. Uh, that's part of fueling our bodies so that we have something to, we have energy with which to use to, to live and function on the planet and do what we're here for. So make sure that you're eating. I'm a big fan of eating healthy food to the best of your ability. I understand that there can be limitations. Ideally, to eat food that you know, know where it came from, like you know its its roots, its meaning, rare, rare consumption of things that are on a package that has a big long list of ingredients and you don't know what they are. <laughs> like it doesn't say, it's just chemicals mostly <laughs> and not like food. So, uh, you know, of course, fruit and vegetables and um, grains and, you know, things that grow and, thrive on the planet. Um, those are the good things for us to ingest. So make sure that you're eating and that um, you're fueling your body well. Uh, I think those are the basics, okay? Pretty sure. Shelter. Oh, I talk about that too, is just the importance of having uh, a roof over your head and, and a space that um, keeps you warm and dry and, and protected from elements. Breaks my heart to know that on our planet, even in this very moment, um, there are people who don't have that and, um, and not always by choice. So I get that. I understand that to the best of your ability. Again, most likely if you're watching this, you have shelter, um, but to the best of your ability, be certain that you, that you have shelter, even if it's in a homeless shelter, somewhere where you can be protected. So that's important for us too. Um, all right, so those are basics. And we're going to put those over there and try to make sure that you are caring for yourself in a way that you have those things or, yeah, or get, find the resources to, to have those things. So then we move on to these other areas like looking at our intellectual self-care, our mental or emotional self-care, your spiritual self-care. I talked a bit about physical self-care. I'll go here first. Physical self-care. What else can you do to care for yourself physically beyond the basics? Well, think of some things that you connect with. Exercise is really good for our bodies. Some form of exercise. If you are confined to your home, at the very least, you can stand up and, well, just stand up. <laughs> you could do maybe squats, you know, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. Um, there's all different kinds of like YouTube videos and, and different exercise apps that you could use to help you uh, do things just in your own home. You can go up and down stairs if you have them. You can march in place. You can turn on music and dance and just move your body. Body. You can do some basic stretching. Um, if you know yoga, you can do yoga. Like there's so many different things that you can do even in a small, tiny, confined space. In a jail cell, cell, a person can do things to care for their body physically and keep moving. You can use your own body as resistance. 
Uh, so there's there's that. There's physical things. You could go outside if you have that as a part of your um, freedoms. So you go outside, get fresh air. I say that all the time, but I just really believe in it. Move your body outside, bike, ride a bike, run, walk, hike, whatever it is that you have access to. Um, walk on a beach. If I had a beach, I would walk on the beach. And if they closed the beach, I, my heart would just break because that would that would so fill my soul. Um, so there's that. Get some sun if you can, right? Just the exposure to the sun. Uh, I was reading a study that had been, or not a study, uh, just a report on the Spanish flu and that in I think it was in the it was in Massachusetts, I believe, but they had a tent set up outside where people patients with the Spanish flu were put outside in the sun on a regular basis, like during the day. And I guess they covered them over. I saw a picture of like these little white tents and a whole row of them and these patients on gurneys outside getting fresh air. So fresh air and sunshine were actually, I believe, proven. I'm going to use that word because I believe that's what they said in the article but that the patients that were exposed to sun and fresh air uh, by by and large fared better than those who were maybe were cooped up in a room with not fresh air. And it inspired hospitals at that time to sort of build or, or, or yeah, I think build uh, hospitals with big, tall windows and cross drafts so that if they had you know, patients inside, not out in tents, they could at least expose them to some fresh air. So sun and fresh air that's that's a part of self-care so um, do that for yourselves uh so there's a bunch of stuff that you can do physically to care for you and that's important here are some things that you can do uh, spiritually to help yourself. I don't know what your faith base is. Mine is Christianity and I read the Bible. And so for me, part of my self-care is spending time uh, sitting daily. It's kind of how I start my day typically is sitting and reading the word of God and soaking it in and having time with God where I'm talking uh, about what I'm learning and and speaking openly about I don't understand this I don't get what this is about or I'm so grateful for this piece or, I'm just grateful for this moment to be able to sit with you Lord and and to connect with you in this way spiritually you want to be doing something that fills you up what is that for you so take time, you know, if you're writing something down, write down, you know, when we're done talking spiritually, what can I do to care for myself and think of all the different ways. I also really love worship. I love singing. And so I've got worship songs and sometimes I'll just put play them and start singing along with them. And, and that's a way that I'm filling myself up as well. So there, what, what is that for you? Prayer, study, singing, how do you connect and fill yourself up? Uh, emotionally. So in the emotional realm, I'm also going to add another word that I didn't say before, and maybe it's its own category, but relationally. Okay. So emotionally, how do I care for myself? Well, I employ the strategies that I try to, that I'm teaching you all of different ways of, you know, taking control of my brain and not letting my thoughts and my emotions run amok. Um, caring for myself in that way. I, I combine physical and spiritual self-care with my emotional self-care. They, they work together actually. And, and so does the relational piece. So enlisting those pieces can help me emotionally. Also just identifying my emotions is so important for me in um, give, and giving them space to be. And so and that's that's a, a an aspect of emotional self care. Um, making sure maybe that you're ingesting information, reading information that helps you to be more balanced. So whether that's you know watching these videos or. Uh, reading online, finding things. Psychologytoday.com has all kinds of resources, not just finding therapists, but also they've got a lot of written information. And I'm sure you can find other other information too. There are blog posts and there are our newspaper articles on, on emotions and, and caring for ourselves in that capacity. So ingest that information and do something with it, put it into practice. 
Then relationally, which I combine kind of with emotions, but or emotionally, emotional self-care, but relationally, we need people in our lives. I, I, you, I don't care. I, I kind of don't like saying that phrase because I do care. It doesn't matter whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. We all were wired, are wired for relationship, for connection with others, other human beings, not just animals. They are important too also human beings. We need that relational connection. And so what can you do to make sure that you are caring for yourself relationally? Are you connecting with other people, either through um, texting or calling, FaceTime? I mean, it really helps to have face-to-face. So there's FaceTime and Google Hangouts or, or Zoom. You can use Zoom. You can get a free Zoom account for, I think you can only use it for like 40 minutes at a time. But there you go. There's ways that we can connect face to face with somebody. I saw these women. I was out on a walk the other day and I saw these women. Um, uh, they were like tailgating. They were in our, our neighborhood pool parking lot and their cars were all backed to each other. They were clearly uh, observing the six foot rule and they had their, you know, hatchbacks lifted up and they're sitting in their cars and they're wrapped up. It was a cool evening and they're wrapped up, you know, hats, coats, da, 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 and wrapped up in blankets. And they were just sitting there talking with each other, right? They created a way that they were able to still connect and it, despite the, the circumstances. So they were being really creative. I decided in my head, I made up a story about this because I don't know that it's true and real beyond reasonable, beyond a doubt. But uh, I decided they're moms and uh, they wanted to get away. They wanted to go somewhere where their children couldn't bother them. So clearly they were either caring for themselves and old enough to do that or with a parent or whatever, uh, another parent or another caregiver. And they, and, and they left. These women all left so that they could get together and that they could connect with one another. That was a story I created about the why. But um, yeah, so be creative in making sure that you are connecting relationally with other people and that you're sharing what's going on in your heart. This is hard. We have to connect with other people over this. Uh, ideally, it's friends and family, people that you can, that you know, that you can talk to. Therapists are really useful and coaches were useful for times when you don't have somebody to share with or you're sharing like a broken record and you got people around you who are like, I don't want to hear it anymore. And then you got to go pay somebody so that you could share the same thing over and over again and they'll they'll listen to you, right? Um, but ideally, the, the best environment for us to heal and, and to be able to um, take care of ourselves uh, relationally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, it, intellectually is with others that we know. And there's a lot of research on trauma. And when people experience a traumatic event, one of the most impactful experiences for them in terms of healing is not so much whether or not they got therapy, but did they have people they could talk to about what was going on for them? Did they have others who could sit with them in the space of their trauma after the trauma? This is an ongoing trauma, but did so talking while we're going through it is actually really helpful. And they found that that was that's really beneficial. So ideally, you want to have a community that you're talking with people who you know and love and they love you and you're all there together. OK, so I cannot emphasize enough the importance of connection in walking through this because this pandemic is a traumatic event and you need people and you need to share with people in order to get through this in a healthy way. Okay. Talking with people doesn't mean that you feel good all of a sudden. Okay. Talking with others doesn't mean, oh, now I'm not affected by this pandemic. Mm -mm, not at all. You are going to continue to be affected by this for as long as it goes on even while sharing it with others. So it doesn't all get better for you, but what you're doing is that you're giving, um, you're giving space for the emotions that you have. You're giving voice to the emotions that you have and the experience that you're having with another being, another person who can sit there with you. And they're probably doing the same, right? We're all sharing what it is that's going on for us together. Uh, and in that, you are creating some healing in your brain. And 
it doesn't, again, it doesn't affect you. It doesn't change necessarily right away. You might feel a little bit of relief having shared, but I just, I just want to emphasize, don't not, not to think like this is some pill you can take and now I don't have to feel this anymore. You're going to, healthy is feeling this, right? But acknowledging that this is really going on. But just understand that over time, as you're doing this and as you're sharing in community with others, what your experience is, that over time there is healing taking place little by little, little by little, little by little. And at the end of all of this, you are far more likely to be able to move forward and to not have it be become PTSD, which is where after a trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder is when that trauma that you were exposed to isn't, isn't uh, dealt with at the time. And later it comes back and, and it continues to affect you as if it's actually happening again or now in that moment. You're way less likely to deal with PTSD if you're dealing with this and speaking with others as you go through it, okay? So there, relational connection is really important for self-care. It doesn't have to take a long time, by the way. None of the things that are self-care have to take a long time. You can do just a little bit of it. That's where if you're super busy, uh, maybe you are you know, pulling 36-hour shifts somewhere or longer, 72-hour shifts. Perhaps you're in the medical community and you're in a hospital that's being slammed right now and you have very little time. Maybe you know somebody who is because they're not actually watching this. You could just say, them a quick little te te text, you know, hey, I'm here. How can I help you in terms of self-care? Um, but uh, even in that situation, you, you have to pull away. You have to get a break. You have to stop and eat. Um, or you will not be effective in what you're doing. Um, you have to pull away and get some rest or you will not be, you will not think clearly and you will make really poor um, decisions in a really tough situation. So better to pull away and have a moment or some time where you're not doing working and let, you know, hand the baton to somebody else for a short time, whatever it is, so that you can rest and take turns so that you can take care of yourself. So you could maybe, um, you know, maybe just sit and meditate for one minute and allow your body to relax for one minute and breathe slowly for one minute and anchor back to what is beautiful and what is right and what is good for one minute. And that one minute can maybe help restore you to get back out there and do what you need to do. God willing, you have more than one minute to take care of yourself, to eat, to get some rest, whatever it happens to be. But definitely think kind of outside the box. Self-care doesn't have to take a long time. It can be very short. It can be brief. But if you're getting it in there, getting it in there, getting it in there, even in little bits, it's better than none. And a lot of times we'll think, if I can't, if I can't go get take an hour out to go get a massage, well, then I can't bother. No. <laughs> One minute of self-care is better than none, okay? So I've addressed, uh, let's see, I know I've looked at spiritual, I've looked at physical, I've looked at emotional slash relational because I think those two really go together. Um, and then there is intellectual. So what are you doing for your brain, <laughs> right? The, the intellectual part of your brain, it's important to get... Um, uh, just being feel sorry. I'm just I'm noticing little things in the side of my screen. Um, it's just important to get uh, information in to that you're that you're you're feeding your intellectual part of your brain. So read, read something that's enjoyable. Read something that is intellectually advancing you. Um, it's good to have like downtime and just chill in front of the TV and watch mindless, you know, hours and hours of uh, whatever. I love the memes about Netflix. Stop asking me if I'm still here. It's shaming me. Um, I think that's really funny when you watch episode after episode of something. So there's space for that, right? There's space to just, ah, oh, kind of mind candy, right? To just not do anything. But but we also need to have space for growing and challenging ourselves. And you can do that. So get, you know, get your hands on material that is interesting to you and is helping you learn something new and different. Uh, maybe even right now, this counts as intellectual self-care because maybe for you, this is new. Maybe for you, it's not. And so this is just, ah, thanks, Karen, for the reminder. I already know that, check. Um, but maybe for you, this is brand new. And so this would be something that fits in intellectual self-care. Uh, maybe you 
you want to learn a new language and you have time. You're one of those that isn't so busy right now and you're able to do that. So, you know, grab a hold of, I, I use the Duolingo app. I don't know what else is out there. I'm sure there's other things. Duolingo has a free option and you just have some little commercials in there, but you can learn a new language and they have a ton of them. So you could do that. Um, you could learn how to knit or to sew or to crochet, uh, learn um, some new craft. Maybe you've always wanted to do some woodworking. Be careful so that you don't overwhelm the emergency room um, and slice off a finger in the process. But, <laughs> you know, maybe you're going to head out to your garage or workshop area if you have one. And maybe there's a project you want to start and you can find out, you know, DIY stuff online and and figure it out. I think Home Depot and other some other um, hardware stores are open because I think that's considered uh, essential. <laughs> you know, got to keep your plumbing going, got to keep electricity going, got to be able to, you know, keep things functioning. And and so I think that's that to me, that sounds essential. So anyway, this maybe that's a t it's a time for you to take on a new project or, or try something new that you've never done before. But think of taking care of yourself intellectually and not just staring at the same four walls or the same t TV set. Turn the television set off sometimes. Honestly, in studies that have been done around watching TV, when we're watching TV, even if it's something enjoyable, they do find that our uh, level of depression is actually a little bit higher when watching TV. So the state that we're in is similar to a depressed state. So just, you know, hold that loosely. It doesn't mean don't watch TV at all because it can be really enjoyable self-care. Don't get me wrong. Um, but watch the amount you're exposing yourself to. Just be be cautious about that or mindful about that and, and get some variety of things that you're doing in terms of what you're exposing yourself to. All right. I think that's it. I think I covered the different components of self-care. Now I put the ball in your court and for you to consider what is self-care for you? How can you care for yourself intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, and physically? And employ those things daily on a regular base. Make sure you are taking care of you. Fill up your sponge. That's going to help you to be able to be more present with others, to be um, more kind, to be more grace-filled, patient. Uh, we need that, especially right now. So just want to encourage you, take care of you so that you can show up for others in a much healthier way. And we really need that. You really need that. I really need that. Okay. Uh, my next live is on Saturday, this coming Saturday. So that is March 28th. It is at 10 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time because I'm in Colorado. It will also be recorded like all the others. So you can uh, go back and watch it even if you miss the, the live at 10 a.m. I'm going to be talking again uh, more in detail about community, the importance of community, and then how, how can you show up? as a healthy individual for others. What does that look like to sit with another person? I, I do this a lot when I think about sitting with a person in their emotion. We kind of hold them. How can you hold another person's emotional experience in a healthy way without being overwhelmed by it and also without moving into a fix, save, or solve mode where you're trying to make the other person better? Okay, so I'm going to talk about that in depth and how you can do that. And in the long run, like it's helpful for right now, but by the way, in the long run, this will help you be a more emotionally intelligent individual and able to show up on this planet from here on out in just a healthier way. So it's for now and it's for later. All of that, everything I've been doing is for now and for later. You can use this down the road for your life. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to connecting again.